wanted to eat my first meal in, in Tokyo was some ramen, but then the ramen place I wanted to go to is basically, I won't be able to get it. Then I wanted some uh, soba. Then the soba place I went to is closed for today and tomorrow. So I, I'm here on Maisen, and they are really known for their tonkatsu um, deep fried pork. I'm just gonna go in this restaurant because I'm starving right now, and their pork is supposed to be amazing. So whatever, I'm just gonna go eat. I'm so excited. Um, just walking in here, man, like all the stuff I saw people eating, it just, oh, it's emotion inducing. So you sit down and they bring you a couple things. You bring your chopsticks, of course. Oops, actually, whoa, does this chopstick not look like a wand out of a Harry Potter movie? Come on. I mean, hocus, but I don't know. And you get a nice warm towel. You got some grated radish, and then you got a lot of condiments here. Katsu sauce, and then I think that's some soy sauce over there, and a little mustard, and some spices. And, okay, so check this out. This menu tells you how to eat here. So appetizer, grated radish, um, please pour soy sauce over and yeet, okay. Rice and cabbage are free refills. I don't feel like a free refill on my cabbage is, is, is really enticing. And we have two kinds of sauce, special tonkatsu sauce and Worcestershire sauce. Interesting. So that's not soy sauce, that's Worcestershire sauce. And this, this is soy sauce. And I'm supposed to pour this into my grated radish. Go. That is surprisingly delicious. Mmm. Oh, it's really, really nice. Mmm. Oh, tea's fantastic too. I'm already so happy. Let's take a look at the menu. We go through all the different cuts of pork here. So you can get shoulder loin, loin, filet, arm, pork belly. I'm going for pork belly for sure. And that's just part of what I'm getting. This is limited to two meals a day. This is limited to five meals a day. It's the Okita Korobuda. And the Korobuda is a black pork, but this is all sold out. This is all sold out. So all I can do is get the Korobuda. I'm getting a cutlet set and a Korobuda pork cutlet over rice. I was getting these insane sandwiches. These are really, really popular. I am gonna pig out right now. Get, get, pig out. Bribed. Look at the pork belly. I mean, this place, th that's all they do is pork. Oh my God. That is a flavorful piece of pork stomach. So extremely, extremely flavorful. The fatty part, obviously, that melts on contact. The lean meat is not that tender. There's a substantial chew to it. But, oh my, it's one of those things where the more you chew, the better it gets. Flash a little lime on here. Cut down on the fat just a little bit. The pork cutlet sandwiches are here. This is kind of what they're known for. It's served on pieces of white bread. The crust is cut off. Look at that beautiful cutlet. And just squeezing it a little bit. The bread itself is so ridiculously gentle and fragile. And you guys see, oh, you guys see the juice oozing out of the meat. There we go. Wow. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Pork cutlet is in here. It's not crispy anymore. Um, egg on top. So you're eating tons of pork and this is really kind of just used to refresh your taste buds. My first bite. Oh, I've heard so much about you. All good things. This is the special tonkatsu sauce that they have. Finally met. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's a contrast of flavor and texture in every bite. So deliciously light and crunchy. And then the inside, the pork is just melty tender. I mean, there's no fat really in that pork. That thing just, just breaks apart so nicely. It crumples as, you, as you're biting into the outer crunchy layer. It just leaves this everlasting impression on its first bite. Oh, I heard so much about this. You guys gotta come here and try this. Wow. A little sweet, a little sour. Everything about this is so fun because it's got such a huge flavor. At the same time, also extremely delicate and subtle. Pairing the bold flavor 
of, of the pork and the sauce that comes along with it is a stroke of genius. You bite into that, mm. the bread just, just creates this little cloud-like cushion right before you taste the sauce and the batter that, that's kind of steeped into the bread already. And then you just get that awesome, clean taste of the pork. You know what? I see why that's there. It's extremely watery. And after one bite, it's like my mouth just took a shower. It's ready for the next bite. I'm gonna try this miso soup. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious miso soup. Now let's get to my, um, my katsudon. So the, the batter on the outside of the pork uh, cutlet is obviously, it's not crispy because it got softer because of the steam. Layer of egg on top of everything and some onions right above the rice. And you can see like all that juice, it, it's in that rice right now. So let me just take a nice big chopstick full of everything. We're gonna dig deep a little bit. Here we go. Look at that. Mm. This might be my favorite thing here today. These ingredients, this is just like Monica, Rachel, Phoebe, Chandler, Ross, and Joey sitting at a dinner table. I mean, it just fits. It just completes each other. After a bite, you almost can't imagine any one of the ingredients are missing. I love the egg that brings just a hint of creaminess to everything. And the onions brings a little crunch, and I just love, love the pork batter and how it plays with the rice, how it just kind of dissolves and integrates itself with each grain of rice. Everything here, it's like a porky, ricey, eggy symphony. Mm. I think this is my favorite thing here tonight. I mean, everything's been good, but I, I love, I love this combo. A lot of fat on this one. Let's invite it to the party. Ha ha ha. Pork belly, some of the tonkatsu, onions, rice, a little bit of eggs. Mm. I think the key here is the more pork you invite to the food party, the better the party is. That's a rule that works every single time. Every single time. Fat on this pork belly. You will love this. The flavor just permeating your mouth. Every single chew, your taste buds just love you more. I'm still on my first helping of cabbage. I, I, like I said, it's, it's a good cleanser, but like, I don't know. I feel like the endless refills of this thing will be, it's kind of lost on me. First meal in Japan, 100% a fantastic choice. But my food journey today, it's not over. Come on, I mean, I decided to forego sleeping to, to eat, and then I'm gonna eat. Let's go. Only in Tokyo. Random DJ on the side of the street. So I told myself that my first day in Japan, I gotta have some ramen. So even though I had a bunch of takasu already, I'm gonna switch over to my second stomach, which is only reserved for ramen. And I'm heading to a place, walking there to burn off as much as I can, called Afuri Ramen. And this place serves something really unique, yuzu ramen. So here we are, and this ramen place is open until three o'clock in the morning, like all good ramen places should. So again, with a lot of ramen places, there's a little vending machine here. I'm gonna get the, the this one. This is the spicy version of the yuzu ramen. Seaweed. Okay, and then I'm gonna also do a large yuzu tsuyotsu kamen. I, I want some dip ramen. Again, what I'm really fascinated by is the yuzu broth. First of all, it's so pretty. Little green, little gold from the yolk, little black from the seaweed. 
And everything is my favorite color of any noodle soup. Let's try that broth. Wow, that's unique. That's unique. And that's absolutely delicious. Um, typically with, with ramen broth, although the broth is splendid, any fattiness is kind of balanced by that beautiful citrusy flavor of the yuzu. It's kind of like what I like to do in uh, noodle soups is add a lot of vinegar and hot oil. So I love the flavor of spicy and sour. So this is absolutely perfect for me. Look at this, look at the noodles. Really thin, straight noodles. Let's see how this is with the broth. Guys, you need to come and try this ramen. It is really like different than most ramens I've ever had. The noodles, nice and chewy. It grabs onto the soup surprisingly well, despite how thin the soup looks. It's a bit heavy, it's a bit oily, it's a bit fatty. Now let's see how the noodle and soup go together. Mm. You don't ever really feel too overwhelmed with this ramen. You never do. I mean, it's just such a great balance. I love the porky chicken flavor of the soup. At no time is it overwhelming. I thought it has half a bowl so far. My stomach still feels pretty good. And that's the sign of a quality ramen, is if you can eat a whole bowl, and I'll let you guys know after I finish it, and you don't feel like you're about to fall into a coma, that's a good ramen. Look how beautifully runny that is. Let's eat the egg with some of the ramen. Finally, you gotta test this baby out. Mmm. Mm. That's a yummy piece of pork. It's fatty, really, really flavorful. It's like I'm biting into a piece of smoke. And that's a good thing. Ah, it's so smoky. Just when you get into the height of the fatty flavor of the roast pork, chase it with some ramen and broth. Mmm. Same beautiful usual flavor. The noodle on this one, that's a chewy noodle. Extremely, extremely chewy. It really grabs onto the sauce well. A little sesame to give it some fragrance. I will say that I prefer the last one better because that broth, I think you gotta try the broth. If you prefer dip ramen, give this a shot. You won't be disappointed. Okay, that doesn't work that well. There's a reason the thinner noodle goes inside the broth. The thicker noodle is it's not able to capture the flavor of the broth as well. Because you just can't penetrate it. I mean, it's still not bad, but each noodle has a purpose and you shouldn't mess with that. Don't try to play noodle god too much. Long line of people over there. I thought they were waiting for a bus. Then I noticed it was all girls. And then I see this. So across the street, there's a little barricade and they're filming like, they're filming some, some I, I guess it's some Japanese celebrity is in there filming and they're watching. And I guess they're waiting for a, hopefully get a selfie or something. Finally, last thing I'm eating tonight or last things I'm eating tonight. I'm not really sure yet. This area over here is known as Harajuku and there's not a lot of people here, but on weekends, it's absolutely packed. There's a lot of shops, a bunch of food vendors. And the one thing that's really famous here are the crepes. So we're gonna walk around, you know, digest a little bit, let the ramen dissolve. I'm just gonna get a crepe from this place. I mean, this is like literally crepe kingdom. Look at this thing. Whatever your heart desires, this place has a crepe for it. Look at it. It has a crepe where there's a cheesecake on the crepe. All right, let's see what's the most popular. Double chocolate banana cream, gelato strawberry chocolate and cream, tiramisu. I want something with uh, 
Just a massive piece of cheesecake inside. This is a crepe. It's literally a stick of cheesecake in there. Oh man, it's funny. Look how thin the crepe is compared to like many places in the US. And this is paper thin crepe. Look at this thing. It dissolves on your tongue. Slightly crispy on the edges. I don't even know how to begin to eat this right now. Look how gentle and flexible the cheesecake is. Look at that. That's really bouncy. I probably wouldn't recommend it after like, you know, two previous dinners of ramen and tonkatsu because this is really creamy. But wow, the crepe itself is so unbelievably thin. When I eat crepes, a lot of times in the US, it's almost like kind of eat, like eating a pancake a little bit. This is like paper, like edible paper. I just took a bite with a cheesecake. Blueberry provides a nice little bit of tart flavor. Everything else is creamy and sweet. You need the blueberries, otherwise this will kill you. This is too much, this is too rich. I mean, this is like drowning in a billion dollars. But overall, with the berries and everything, this is a wonderfully sweet ending to this awesome first day in Japan. All right, I was actually planning to walk around and see what other food items they have here, but um, it seems like this area is kind of shutting down, so I think that's a sign for me to go back to the hotel and go to bed. As always, guys, all the places I went to is listed for you in my description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm so happy I'm back in Japan. Until we eat again, I'll see you later.